This is Conrad Theodore from Bulls Publications. Uh, LeBron, now that the series is over, uh, can you evaluate uh, Jimmy Butler's defense and how he compares to uh, some of the other guys who've been around the league who've tried to cover you? Um, I think he's a competitor, and uh, and that's half the battle. A guy that wants to compete every single possession, every single night. Um, you know, he does that. He does it on both ends, and um, you know they got a good one here. LeBron, uh, Bill Livingston, Plain Dealer. LeBron, you your shot was off. Kyrie only could give you a quarter, and you guys won decisively. Could you speak about the bench and especially the guys on each side of you? Just said it, Bill. I mean, we get 40 points off our bench. This guy to my right, this guy to my left, Deli come in you know, under extreme circumstances and, and do what he did tonight, leading our team and scoring. But it was just his impact. Obviously, we know he made shots, but what he did defensively, picking up a big charge on D-rolls, just trying to create havoc defensively. These two, um, as hard as they play, as a coach and as a, as a leader for me, you have no – you have no problem with them making making mistakes because how hard they play and, and what their intentions is, they give everything to the team. And, and you don't mind when they make a mistake. You, you rarely see it because they're out there just playing hard and they're giving everything they got. And um, obviously, we don't get this win without uh, the 13 and 17 from this guy and the 19 and, and just how in tune they was you know, from, from the start. LeBron, are you surprised your first year with the team Kevin Love is out for the playoffs. Kyrie is injured. Uh, J.R. Smith's out the first two games. And you were able to come and beat this Bulls team and really kind of not even be in the game today. Are you surprised at how well your team has performed so far the first year? Uh, who wasn't in the game? Me? I'm sorry? The last part? You said what? No, are you surprised at how well your no. team has performed your first year based on those events there? Um, we... we, we these guys work their tails off every single day when you guys are not around. Um, obviously, yes, I'm a, a little bit surprised because how we've handled, you know, the postseason so far. You know, these are first timers right here, and as well as Kyrie and Kev, you know, before the injury, and um, they uh, they want to they want to be good, they want to be great, and, and every single day they um, they prepare the right way, um, and they just go out and they just play with their instincts. You know, they've been playing basketball their whole lives, and uh, for them to go out there and just put it out on the floor, I think good things happen to guys that are just true to the game, and uh, that, that's what we have right now. Bron, Josh Weir from the Canton Repository over here on the right. Um, you know, Kyrie's limping off the floor there in the second quarter. A couple moments later, you, you look like you tweaked your back a little bit. It, it just seemed like everything was working against you guys, and again, you don't seem to let doubt creep in at all. I mean, how, how do you how do you prevent that from happening in those moments? Uh, you know, when you're a leader of a group, um, you can't really show any weakness. And, uh, you know, my back, you know, got you know kind of turned and you know, I had a little spasm. Um, a couple of plays later, I went up for off as a rebound and it fell on my knee and was limping a little bit. But I, I have to be out there for my guys if I can, uh, which I could. And um, I can't show any weakness. Um, you know, the stats, you know, tonight, the way I shot the ball, um, I don't think define who I am uh, and what I, what I mean to this team. And, um, you know, I just try to bring that leadership to these guys and, and just try to, you know, bring that leadership, that energy to, you know, make these guys even believe they're, you know, even supernatural sometimes <laughs> than they are. And, and the things that they did tonight was, uh, it was unbelievable. These two guys right here, they were, oh, wow, they were spectacular. Right here. Rick Tallender, Chicago Sun-Times. Matthew, uh, it looks to me if they just let you play as many minutes as LeBron, you would have had 30 points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were you just feeling it tonight with all the minutes you got to play? Um, I mean, they, they put so much attention on Braun, um, and, and you know he's going to find you when, when you're open. <coughs> Obviously, Kyrie was out for the second half, so, um, you know, I, I knew I was going to be out there, so um, it, it's easy to just let, let shots go when, when uh, your teammates have that much confidence in you. Joe Varden, uh, Cleveland.com. 
Matt, just I guess uh, following up on that, I mean, did you ever picture yourself sitting up there at the podium after an Eastern Conference semifinal? I mean, playing the kind of role that you played to send them on? Uh, I mean, I, I don't picture. I mean, th this is all the extra fluff stuff. What matters is what happens in the game. So, you know, I've pictured myself, uh, you know, making important plays in a game and, and things like that. So, um, it, it was nice to be able to help the team out tonight. Chris Angs, Cleveland.com. Trish, uh, beginning of the year, back here, Trish. Yeah, I see you. Yep. Uh, beginning of the year, you had to take a role uh, coming off the bench, something you haven't done in a while. And then it kind of lined up right towards the end of the year where, where you have to step right into the start line and produce. Can you talk about this whirlwind of what you've been through personally and you know, was it easy or hard to step right in and, and step right into a contributing starting position? No, uh, the season, uh, the way I approached it was, I feel like I had a cheat sheet. You know, coming off the bench, I'm able to, you know, view the game, see how the game's being played, see how their bigs are being played. And really for, you know, what I bring to the table, which is energy, if, you know, the starters go in and, and, and run their bigs for a little bit, when I check in, you know, it's time to punch the clock, play hard. and. Um, you know, whatever my team needs me to do to help us succeed, you know, that, that's that's what I'm about, and that's and that's what I'm here. You, um, Bill Livingston, Plain Dealer. What was it like being booed like like LeBron tonight? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I, I was booed like that. Um, I, I don't really really hear that. Um, More than just a leg lock, guys. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, I've played it. Gonzaga and BYU, and it was definitely a lot louder than booze there. So, uh, Ali Clifton, Fox Sports Ohio. Tristan, year four for you. Your first time in the playoffs, and now here you are going to the Eastern Conference Finals. What does that mean to you? What a year! <laughs> um, you know, fourth year with the Cavaliers. You know, the previous three years we were, you know thinking about the lottery, who we're going to draft, and now just being part of the playoffs and just having the opportunity to play with, you know, this, this great father over here uh, is definitely special. Um, just, what a ride. You know, I'm glad I could be a part of it and, and, and help this team win. And, uh, you know, it's not over yet. We still got goals we're trying to achieve. You know, we're going to enjoy this for, for a day, maybe a couple hours, but then it's time to lock back in and get ready for our next opponent. Deli, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. When you found out that Kyrie wasn't going to start the second half, what was going through your mind at that point, and what was LeBron's message to you right before you took the court? Um, well, I just, Andy grabbed me an extra coffee at halftime and, you know, j just go out and play. Um, that's about it. That David Venom and ESPN.com. We spoke uh, on that road trip in January in Gold State, and uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, and, yeah, <laughs> maybe one of the few times we had a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, David Griffin had put it out there that the team was after you know point guard help. How was it, what was that like having that out there publicly? And did that motivate you to work <laughs> any harder? And then just for LeBron, at what point did you know what you had in both these guys as teammates? Yeah, I remember that. Um, you know, I guess uh, I wasn't playing as well as I would have liked uh, helping the team. Um, we had a lot of guys in and out of the lineup, and then uh, you know the trade happened. But I was always confident that uh, I could I could be you know the backup point guard for this team and uh, perform that role. So um, you know, I'm just happy that they stuck with it and uh, doing the job. Uh, for me, um, <clears throat> you can't coach a motor. Just some guys have it, some guys don't. I have the luxury to have um, three guys on this team, and, and obviously, you know, Anderson Verge, I'll be out for the season. It's three guys with high motor, and you can't coach that. You, know, you put those guys on the floor, they're going to make something happen. And when you have guys that play as hard as they do, they're in tune with what they need to do to help the team win, the mistakes or shots making and things of that nature, I don't care about. You know, Delhi doesn't make a mistake because he makes misses a shot. 
you know, or Tristan doesn't make a mistake just because he didn't get a stop. But these guys play so hard, and you know, you're able just to, you know, brush that to the side because you know what they're doing. Their their intentions is so for the team, and it has nothing to do about themselves. And you know, I've always I'm I'm a team guy. I, I've always been that way. I was taught that way. And when you're around guys that only care about the team and, and worry about themselves secondary, then you can appreciate that. Rachel Nichols from TNT. Um, sorry. You're good. Do your thing. Uh, LeBron, you've now made five straight Eastern Conference Finals. Good judge now. Uh, what would you say about this team as you go into this big series and Hawks or Wizards? But where, where do you think the potential is? Um, I think they're all different and they're all right. Um, obviously, it's been a, a little tougher just because of the injuries we've had. You know, the hill that we have to climb. Um, you know, we're playing basketball with one of our best players, you know, not even, you know, not playing in Kevin Love. And we're playing basketball right now. One of our best players is playing on one foot. So the, we have no room for error. And none of us. And, um, and, and I've had some error, and, but I just try to clean it up in other ways. Um, you know, so this is a different challenge. I'm very blessed uh, to be able to be a part of the Eastern Conference Finals. This is my fifth straight time, and um, I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't feel like much right now um, because I'm in it. I've always said, you know, I talked to a good friend of mine in Maverick Carter, and we always talk about, you know, at some day when I'm done playing the game, we can sit we can sit back and join some wine and 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 and, and look at all the accomplishments that I had. But I do everything for my team. I do everything for my teammates. I want these guys to, to be able to, you know, feel this moment. And that's what I'm. That's what I came back here for. I got four guys that never made the postseason. That plays a huge role in this team. And for me to be able to bring them, um, you know, joy of playing the game of basketball again. Uh, that's what I care more about than anything. Le LeBron, Mark Carmen, WGN. Following up on that, what are fair expectations going forward? Do you feel like you guys are underdogs? I mean, how do you, how do you look at it? Huh? Well, Underdog? Well, right. Me? I, I don't think so, but uh, me either. <laughs> I, don't, I would never be an underdog. <laughs> uh, would you call yourself a favorite? Um, I think we have a great chance. You know, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, one thing about us, we're gonna play hard. We're gonna give ourselves a fighting chance, and you know, we let the game take care of itself. If we're true to the game, the game will give back to us. I think our coaching staff, uh, whoever, if it's between Washington or Atlanta, we're gonna have a great game plan, and it's up to us as players to go out and execute it. Uh, Ethan Skolnick, Turner Sports Bleach Report. LeBron, following on something you said earlier and Tristan calling you this father over here. <laughs> in terms of, of the development of the young guys on this team, how does that kind of fit in in the total context of, of things that matter to you in terms of the way that you've seen guys grow this year? I just year? think it's the development of the mind more than anything. I think the game will take care of itself. These guys work their tail off before and after practice. You know, off days they come in and get work, but I think, you know, the development of the mind, how you think the game, how you approach the game mentally, uh, will take you a lot further than just going out and dribbling the basketball and shooting it. Obviously, we have stat sheets and uh, we have highlights that everyone see after the game and things of that nature. But, you know, how you approach the game mentally um, will take you a lot further. Um, you know, these two guys—he's not the most athletic guy right here. He's not the tallest power forward in our league. He's not the strongest power forward in our league, but. Not too many guys keep him off the glass. This guy right here is not the most athletic, fastest, doesn't shoot it as great as all the other point guards in our league. But I'll put him out there versus anybody. I mean, this guy has to guard Kyrie Irving every single day in practice. It's not an easy task. You know, but, you know, when your mind is true, and um, I just think the game just gives back to you. And, and I'm blessed to have some guys that just really care uh, about the game of basketball and the true form, you know, and not the – stat sheets and all that crazy mess. Uh, Steve Ashburner, NBA.com. For Matthew and, and Tristan, um, playing with someone uh, like LeBron, knowing the expectations that he has and that people have for his teams, how much of this season has been an opportunity and how much of it has been a responsibility for you guys? You all did that. You can answer first. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's been a great opportunity to watch him work every day and, and just learn and observe, you know, how, 
I think the biggest thing for me is how much he takes care of his body. I've really learned that. Um, and then um, I don't think it's a responsibility. It's, it's just a big opportunity. So uh, you want to just make the most of the opportunities that come. And we've obviously got a great opportunity here, and uh, we're trying to make the most of it. Just to piggyback what, what, what Delhi said, it's just um, it's a great opportunity. And I think myself, Delhi, Kevin, and Kyrie, the way we approached the season was, you know, we have a chance to play with someone that's, you know, go down and be one of the best ever. So for us, it just motivates us to work harder because at the same time, you know, we want to be be great in our, in our own lane. And <clears throat> it started from Labor Day. You know, he, LeBron was the first one in the gym working out, getting ready for the season. And, and as a young player, you know, that just shows you that he's, he's never stopped working on his game. You know, he's in two hours before practice, two hours after practice, always working on his game, watching film, treatment. And for us, we know we got we got to catch up. We got to do the extra things. If he's doing that, we need to do double, triple, because you know th th this opportunity has definitely been a blessing for us, and we got to make the most of it and, and help him, especially in the playoffs, just to have success.